This is Math 142. We're going to take a peek at some other two functions uh, other than sine and cosine. Uh, just to remind you, we know that if we have a the unit circle, right, where the unit means that that radius is one, um, or the hypotenuse is one, we know that sine is height. So sine of that angle, if that angle is t, would be the y value of this point, and cosine of that angle would be the uh, the x. So again, this is when that radius is fixed at one, when this hypotenuse here is one. So let's get at a couple other things. Uh, tangent of the angle. Tangent is also known as the slope function because it gives you the slope of the uh, of the angle. And slope is rise over run, right? Y over x. So tangent is y over x. And there are a few other ones for us to define. These are called the reciprocal func functions. And a reciprocal is just basically a fraction flip. So A over B, its reciprocal is B over A. So um, sine, its reciprocal is cosecant. And cosecant is 1 over Y. Uh, for cosine, it's secant. 1 over x, right? Because this would be x over 1, its reciprocal is 1 over x. You just flip it over. And then tangent, its reciprocal is cotangent, which is x over y. One thing that helps me remember these, um, cosine and sine are reciprocals. Secant and cosine are reciprocals. Notice that first letter changes. So uh, cosecant is 1 over sine. And right sine is 1 over cosecant. All right, so we have all of these defined. So we also have worked on our unit circle. We've used, we've used it. I'll just paste one in here. I think I still got one. And just in case if you haven't found your own unit circle, um, if you haven't have found your own unit circle, I just want to point out that I did post one in the um, resources part. If you look in resources of uh, in WAMAP, you'll find a unit circle. So let's find all six trig functions for some values. And we'll start with 2 pi over 3. So sine of it, cosine of it, tangent of it, and so on. So you either have it memorized or you're like, oh, look up on my unit circle. So um, 2 pi over 3 sine is the height. That's the y value. So it's root 3 over 2. Cosine is the width, negative 1 half. Tangent is y over x. So let's think about this for a second. It's sine over cosine, right? Also sine over cosine. So root 3 over 2 over negative 1 half. Now there's two ways you can think about this. Um, you have a fraction divided by a fraction, right? So root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. And when you divide by fractions, you're multiplying by its reciprocal. The twos divide out, giving us negative root three. I like to think about it this way. One half divided by one half is one. The one halves divide out. Root three divided by negative one is negative root three. All right, so there's those pieces. Uh, next piece are those flips. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So cosecant, this is two over the square root of three. Now, uh, technically, we shouldn't be leaving a radical in the denominator. So the way that I'm going to get it out of there is I'm going to multiply by this version of 1. Right? This value is just 1. But what this does for me is root 3 times root 3 is root 9, which is 3. So I get 2 root 3 over 3. So I'm going to write this as 2 root 3 over 3. Um, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Negative 1 half, flip that over to negative 2. Tangent, uh, negative root 3 over 1. So when I flip that, it's negative 1 over root 3. Multiply by this version of 1, it gives me negative root. And there I found all six, the values of all six um, trig functions of 2 pi over 3. Do it for another, another value. 7 pi over 6. Okay, 7 pi over 6 is right here, right? That's a 30-degree angle in there. 
So I could reference angle it, I could look it up. Sine is y, height, negative one half. Cosine is width, negative root three over two. Tangent is y over x, or sine over cosine. So that's negative one half over negative root three over two. A negative divided by a negative is positive. One half divided by one half is one half, so it's one over root three. Get that radical out of there, uh, which is root three over three. Okay, that feels good. Um, now I'm going to do those reciprocals. I'm going to go back to for cotangent. Tangent was one over root three, so if I flip that, it's just root three. Flip this is negative root two. Flip this, it's two over negative root three, so it's going to be negative. Multiply it by that. Two root three over three. Found them all. Now, one thing I didn't talk about last time was an angle like zero degrees. Well, let's look at zero degrees. It's right here. And uh, sine and cosine are still the x and the y values. So let's see, sine of zero, its height is zero. Its width is one. Tangent, y over x, or sine over cosine, zero over one is zero. And which makes sense, it has a slope of zero there. Now the thing about cosecant, if I try to go one over zero, I can't divide by zero. So it's undefined doesn't have a value. Uh, 1 over 1 is 1, and cotangent will also be undefined for the same reason. Uh, let's look at power over 2. So power over 2 is up here. The height is 1. It's at its maximum height. And the width is 0. Tangent, y over x, sine over cosine, it's 1 over 0. Notice that's undefined as well. Which makes sense to me because this slope, this is straight up. You can't get steeper. This is infinitely steep so that we would say we can't really assign a number value to that. Um, cosecant, if I 1 over 1 is 1. If I try to go 1 over 0, that's undefined. And what's interesting about cotangent then, cotangent is x over y. That would be 0 over 1, which is 0. All right, so you can, you can look these up and get on your way. A couple things I want to get at. I want to remind you that we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So if I told you cosine of some angle is negative 1 fifth and quadrant 3, and I want you to find the value of all the six trig functions of t, we can get there without actually finding the angle t. Uh, so first off, let's think about quadrant 3. That's here. Notice Cosine's negative, which happens. Sine will also be negative because it's going down. So uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Negative 1 fifth squared is 1 25th. Square, uh, subtract 1 25th from both sides. That's going to give us 24 25ths. Square root that. That's a 5. Square root of 24. That's 4 times 6. 2 root 6. And we know it's negative because it's going down. So sine will be negative 2 root 6 over 5. So tangent is y over x or sine over cosine. So it's going to be negative 2 root 6. 5 over negative 1 fifth. So the negatives divide out, the 1 fifths divide out, leaving us just 2 root 6. All right, uh, secant is cosecant, is cosine flipped over, so negative 5. Notice if I flip over sine to get cosecant, that's negative 5 over 2 root 6. I want to get that root 6 out of the bottom. So I'm going to multiply this version of root 6. So I've got negative 5 root 6 over 2 times 6 is 12. And then if I flip this, uh, it's 1 over 2 root 6. Multiply by root 6 over root 6. Root 6 over 12. And, uh, yeah, that is that is uh, positive because those are both negative. Good. So notice we can do this with anything. 
If we had uh, decimals, we could get at it all the same exact way. I really strongly recommend you do a sketch to keep track of the direction. Um, you know, if x is negative or if y is direction. Think about what quadrant you're in, that's super important. Hey, give these practice problems a try. Post any questions you have in the forum, message them to me, and uh, good luck.